This is an example of a two-sided proportion hypothesis test. Two-sided is when we do the not equal to. Say we're going to flip a coin 120 times and we get heads 70 times. We're going to use hypothesis testing to figure out if the coin is fair. We would expect to get 60 heads, 50%. We got more than we expected. We want to know, was that just a fluke? You know, weird things happen. Or is that evidence that the coin's not fair? So uh, first we decide our population and success. The population is all the different coin flips we could get. We decided, or I decided, to call getting head success. We could have easily done tails. So we must write this step as required. Let P be the proportion of the population that is successful. We did our sample, 70 out of 120 is a 58.3% sample success rate. Then our hypotheses are, if the coin were fair, we would get a population success rate of 50%. If the coin's not fair, we won't get 50%. If the coin's not fair, it might give you too many heads or too many tails. We don't care which way. Either way, it's still a messed up coin. So we do this as a two-sided hypothesis test. Anytime we don't care if a rate is above or below, if we just care if it's different than what we believed, we do a two-sided test. So our picture, when we draw it out, will look like this. We'll actually end up shading both tails equally far apart. In the middle, the average sample should have 50% heads if the coin is fair. We got a sample success rate way up here, 58% heads. In a two-sided test, we shade both tails equally far away. So this would be, if we were to write it out, that would be below 42%. Anything above there or below there is equally weird. We'll pull up our fancy calculator and do all the work. So we go stat over to tests and number five. Our P naught, always the number we have here, 50%. We had 70 out of 120, and we chose not equal to as the alternative hypothesis. We go to calculate, and we get our p-value. This is the only number we care about here. Our alpha level was 5%. Our p-value was almost 7%. That's bigger. If the p-value is bigger than alpha, we fail to reject the null. And we draw no conclusions. So don't get the wrong idea here. We're not writing fail to reject because of this. We're writing fail to reject because our p-value was bigger than alpha. So we fail to reject the null. We don't accept anything. We draw no conclusions at all. And we still need to write a, a final sentence. Our final sentence is always going to include this statement here. We either do have strong evidence or we don't have strong evidence of the alternative. Here we do not. We do not have strong evidence that the coin is not 50% heads. So we don't have strong evidence the coin is not fair.